Dance Boys, you can hear what he has to say. He's his Dance Boy, he thinks the world is all over. here bring your latest in your Brooklyn Nets news. Okay, so much, so much, so much, so much to go over at, after these first five games of the Brooklyn Nets season. So much to go over. First and foremost, the Nets are three and two, which I am pretty pleased with because I'm going to be honest, I didn't expect this. I didn't expect this team to be very good, and they're off to, in my opinion, a pretty good start. So let's just dive right in and look at the games, and let's see what we really think happened in the first few games. Well, let's start off first with, obviously, the first major thing to go over, and that was the first game against the Pacers, and, of course, the Jeremy Lin injury. Um, look, this is a dev was a devastating blow and still is a dev devastating blow for the Nets. And, you know, Jeremy Lin with a, was a ruptured uh, patella tendon, supposed to ha had, sur had surgery, he's going to be out for the rest of the year. Look, that is a terrible situation. But you want to know something? I think this Nets team is going to do okay without him. I, I, I think that the way this team is built, they have depth and leadership. And, and as good of a player as Jeremy Lin is, I think the Nets have the players and the make to overcome his loss and 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 I think it was shown with the fact that since Lynn got hurt in the very first game of the season the Nets are three and one which their only loss being a game against the Magic in which personally they should have won but D'Angelo Russell rolled his ankle and I have a feeling that that kind of affected him down the stretch of that game because usually he tries to take over at the end of the game and in the wins that the Nets have had he made big shots down the stretch and in a game with the Magic he struggled, and I think it could have been because of his ankle. I, I'm not sure, but my, my point is they've looked really good these first five games, um, even without Lynn. And I, I don't want to say they're a better team without Jeremy Lynn because I don't think that's true, but they're a different team. And I think if you watch the very beginning, it, it just kind of seemed like there was so much alternative who had the ball in their hands between Lynn and Russell and who was doing what. And it kind of seemed like, okay, the ball has to be one of those two guys' hands, and then everyone else just kind of get open and do something. But now with Lynn gone, it's kind of more of a free-flow offense. It's whoever gets the ball, get the ball into D'Angelo Russell's hands, and that's all play off of him. There's more of one person focal point that the team is playing off of compared to multiple guys and kind of like, okay, your turn, my turn type of thing. Um, so I'm not saying that the Nets are better without Jeremy Lynn, but I, I think that they are a different team and a little bit more of a – complete team and also though what this also has allowed is allowed spencer dinwiddie who the hell is spencer freaking dinwiddie remember that i mean who is he he's one of the better players on the nets that's who he is uh it allows spencer dinwiddie to prove his worth and develop and show his true ability i mean spencer freaking dinwiddie is amazing i i love this guy now i mean <laughs> i <laughs> It was only maybe about not even a year ago when I had that video. Who the hell is Spencer Dinwiddie? And 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 it took some time for me to warm up to him, but he's great. He's a very good, solid NBA player, and he has just gotten better. He's making big shots. The game against the Cavs, I can't even go into details about that right now. Like, like I want to, but let, let, let's be honest. Like, okay, game against the Cavs. With no D'Angelo Russell and no Jeremy Lin, and you're going to tell me that the Nets are going to win? I would have said you're crazy, but because of Spencer freaking amazing Dinwiddie, who put up 22 points, 6 assists, and 5 rebounds, the Nets won and made huge shots. I mean, it is look, that is, to me, the best thing about this Nets team. I said it in my last Nets Boy episode that the thing this Nets team has is they have depth. They have multiple players who can play multiple positions and can be and do multiple things, and we're seeing that now. No Jeremy Lin, well, didn't did, did what he I mean, D'Angelo Russell steps up as the main leader and the main go-to guy. D'Angelo Russell goes down, well, here goes Spencer freaking Dinwiddie. I mean, it's incredible, and just to put it in perspective, Isaiah Whitehead doesn't even play. Like, he doesn't even play on this Nets team, even with the injury to um, Jeremy Lin. 
you would think that oh maybe he he get some playing time. No, no, none, none, none at all. They they go with Sean Kilpatrick got some minutes today, and then before that they they gave it the minutes to Joe Harris. So that shows you the depth that Whitehead's still not even being used. He actually got called down uh, to the Long Island Nets and then called back up. But that shows you the depth of this team that a player like Whitehead, who was a rotational player last year, of course by necessity isn't even being used yet, and there's two injuries to players that's in his position. <coughs> Excuse me. Got excited. Um, but anyway, I mean, just look at these games. Wins over Mag- the Magic, a win over the Hawks, and now a great win over the Cavs. The loss to the Pacers, whatever, that was their first game, and the loss against the Magic was a little upsetting, but this team looks decent. They look good. They look solid. And... I remember I said the big question is, what is his identity of this team going to be now that Brooke Lopez isn't there? Who's the face? Well, the face to me is definitely D'Angelo Russell. I know, Jeremy, with Jeremy Lin being gone, it is this is D'Angelo Russell's team. And I think that with Russell as the leader and with the respective veteran role players they have, you know, DeMar Carroll's been great. Alan Crabb has been solid. He's not even a veteran, but whatever. Trevor Booker has gone off to a fantastic start. Joe Harris is making threes. Jared Allen, by the way, has looked great in his first few games. He makes a couple of mistakes, but he's still a rookie. You know, you look at this team, it's very good. Spencer Dinwiddie's been great. I mean, everyone has been very solid for this Nets team. And it's all of a sudden getting me excited. You know, the, the win against the Cavs is getting me excited. And I, 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 I'm becoming optimistic. For, and, and that's a bad thing, because normally when I become optimistic, bad things happen. But either way, um, you look at the wins, like I said, <clears throat> the game against the Magic, the first game against the Magic, which they won, that was a very solid win, complete team effort. And then the and the Hawks game, that was obviously, I mean, the Hawks to be one of the worst teams in the in basketball, and, and it was evident in that game. And and then the win against the uh, the the, the uh, Cavs to me was just great. And when you look at this team, like I said, what is the identity? Well, the identity is simple: run and gun, shoot lots of threes, play off D'Angelo Russell. It's as simple as that. I mean, it kind of almost feels like you're watching like a high school basketball game because there's constant running up and down the court, shooting threes all the time, and fast pace, fast pace. That's the identity of this Nets team is fast pace offensively, and then get in between the defense and get, with their with with their hands and, and and deflections. That's the other thing. There's a lot of people on this Nets team who are good with stealing the basketball. We saw Damari Carroll with a huge steal against the Magic in the game, even though they lost. We saw him make a huge steal. We see Crabb getting his hands on things. Dinwiddie, uh, D'Angelo Russell, they're all, Rondé Hollis Jefferson, they're all constantly trying to intercept passes and stealing the ball. And that's a pretty decent defensive philosophy when it come, when you have the personnel for it, which the Nets do. So that's their defensive identity is getting in the passing lanes, trying to clog up the lanes defensively, trying to poke the ball out, making steals and turnovers, which makes sense because their offensive philosophy is run and gun, get the ball to, to the past the half court as fast as you can, Find the open guy for the three with either a back cut or a pick and roll. And find the open man for a three or a pick and roll slash to the basket type of thing. Or just let D'Angelo Russell get to the lane and make a floater. So that's kind of been the identity, which I'm pleased to see because it's kind of like they're saying, okay, listen, we don't have the low post presence anymore in Brook Lopez. So how can we manufacture points? Well, easy. We have a bunch of three shooters who are good at running the court. I mean, it's the most basic form of offense, really, if you think about it, next to the regular pick and roll. Just run past to the half-court line, find the open guy, and shoot a three. I mean, so, but it works. It works for the Nets, and the Nets have the personnel to do it, and that's why they are three and two these first five games. So I've been pretty pleased. I think it's incredible, and I hope it continues. You know, there's not one player on this Nets team right now that I am just shaking my head at. Maybe Mozgov, like I said, he to me, he's still kind of useless. He's a big body, you know, but when it's all said and done, I'd much rather have Jared Allen out there on a regular basis. And, I mean, Jared Allen's great. I, I love this guy. I mean, he, he's got to develop more of an offensive game, but I love his energy. I love his defensive ability, and he, he, he's not afraid. I, I love him. And D'Angelo Russell is, seems to be everything that we were hoping he would be. And, you know, what I love about D'Angelo Russell is he's a go-to guy at the end of the game that the Nets can finally go to to make a big basket. He's got a little clutch in him. I mean, yes, he didn't make the shots with the Magic, but the games before that, the game against the Hawks and the game against the Magic before that, he was a big go-to guy. And out of nowhere, Spencer Dinwiddie is all of a sudden now a go-to guy, which even makes things even more exciting to know that Dinwiddie has that type of potential. So 
This team is very well put together. You know, I haven't even talked about Karis LeVert. He's looked solid. And Ronda Hollis Jefferson, apparently, so far, is legitimately that offensive player that he seemed to be in the preseason. He's making that mid-range jump shot. And as long as he continuously makes that, that's that's a, just another weapon for this Nets team. This Nets team is going to score. The problem with this team is how well would they defend. They defended pretty well against the Cavs. That's why they pulled off the win. But they're going to have some pretty high-scoring games, especially with the style of offense they play, a fast-paced, run-and-gun type of offense. But as long as they can continue to improve on the defensive end and make big plays when it matters defensively, this team could be very good. And I think the question mark comes down to now whether or not this team is good enough to make the playoffs. I think they are. I think that in the week east, I think that they are definitely good enough to maybe make the seventh or eighth seed. Because let's be honest, if you look at the east, who are the best teams in the east? The Cavs? Okay, well, the Nets just beat the Cavs. Yes, the, half the Cavs team is like hurt, but still. The Celtics? Okay. The Raptors? Okay. The Wizards? And then after that, those four teams, who else? Probably the Bucks. I would say the Bucks are going to be there, and probably the Hornets. Those are the six teams that I feel like are a lock of making the playoffs. But then you got the Pistons, the Pacers, the Magic, the Nets, the Heat. Those five teams, to me, are all the 76ers. Those six teams are all capable of making the playoffs in that Eastern Conference. Uh, I feel like really only the Bulls, Hawks, and Knicks are really the only three, like, terrible doubt they're going to be close to making the playoffs teams in the East. So... So those three teams aside, I think it's then between those six teams for those final two playoff spots when the season comes to the end. That's my prediction. And I think the Nets could be one of those teams. I'm not going to say they will, but I put them in that possible playoff category based off what I've seen these first five games. Um, like I said, I don't know if this is going to continue. I don't know, you know, if they're better without Jeremy Lin or, or, or the or not like that. I mean, either way, to me, in my opinion, Jeremy Lin's days as a net are, are going to be numbered. Well, that's not true. We might have seen the last time we seen Jeremy Lin as a net because he is a he does have an opt out clause at the end of this year, and I think it'd be foolish to opt out because after coming off an injury, you know, why would you test a free agent waters? But I think that if the Nets have a good year this year without Lynn, and they see D'Angelo Russell as more of the go-to point guard, I think you might see Jeremy Lynn get traded over the offseason next year if he buys it. But that's way in advance. And that may not even be true because they might say, okay, let's see what this team is like now with Lynn. And if, if Lynn doesn't mesh well with the new team, then they'll trade Lynn, or maybe he'll mesh even better and the team would even be better. But I, I, I don't know. I mean, either way, when Jeremy Lynn got hurt, I thought the season was going to be a disaster, but... Right now, other players have picked it up. And, I mean, it's still really early in the season. We're only five games in. But I've been very pleased and and optimistic about this season. So, I'm excited. So, there you have it. So, let's look at the next few games coming up for the Nets before we wrap up this video. So, like I said, they just beat the, uh, they just beat the Cavs, which was a great game. Um, now, after that, now they've got tomorrow... Or Thursday, depends on when you're seeing the game. Or excuse me, Friday, depends on when you're seeing the game. They have the Knicks. Like I said, I think the Knicks are one of the worst teams in the East. They should win that game, but anything can happen. We know that the Nets are still not a great team, in my opinion. They're just a solid team. Knicks, then they got the Nuggets, then they got the Abysmal Suns, and then they get to face Brooke Lopez in LA uh, after that. So looking at the next four games, I think the Nets could definitely go three and one. I really do. Um, I'm going to take a two and two split. Um, I think the Knicks game and the Suns game, they need to win those two games, but the Nuggets are not a terrible team. They're not a great team. But they're a good team. And the Lakers, I feel like, are, are a very good team that just has to figure it out as time goes on. So I'm going to expect a two and two uh, stretch the next four games, uh, but... You know, if they I, they could definitely go three and one, and so heck, they could go four and zero. Oh, but I think they'll go two and two. If the Nets do that, I'm gonna feel really good about this team. And if they continue to play the way they've been playing, I'll be very good about this team. So there you have it. Let me know what you guys think about this Nets team, and and, and comment below, and let me know if you feel this team is is gonna make the playoffs. What what do you think is gonna be the outcome with Jeremy Lin? Is he you know 
who's the go-to guy if you think that there's going to be better development. You know, just say whatever that's on your mind. So keep your eyes open for the latest Nets boy. And until then, this is Nets boy being unbelievably excited for the first time in a long time about his Brooklyn Nets. Oh, by the way, DeMar Carroll's really good too. I don't know if I said that, but he's been good. Everyone's been good. Quincy Asi's making shots. Everyone's been good on the Nets. There's no one who's been terrible other than Mozgov. But this is Nets boy being very excited and signing off. Where the Nets just